Howdy, I'm Tony Nestor. Thought I'd go over a couple things out here at our, our base camp where we do some of our high desert survival courses. We're in the Painted Desert area, kind of uh, north of Flagstaff by an elevation of 6,500 feet. It's end of July. I just finished a knife only course, so we're on the, the second day of one. So people have been building their shelter, sleeping out in them. We got hammered yesterday. Flagstaff saw uh, extensive flooding last couple of days. Our rains have really been intense. It's usually pretty regional this time of year. It'll roll in in the afternoon. It'll hit one area, maybe a mile or two away. There won't be anything. Blue, blue skies above. But it's been really statewide, and uh, <clears throat> our rains have been really intense. And the, the rain we had yesterday, three inches in one hour, was incredible. This is definitely going to be. Uh, serious flash flooding for some of the neighborhoods and and communities, especially out on the Navajo Reservation, where things just turned to quicksand and mud almost instantly. So it was a real good test of the shelters, and uh, some held up better than others. And it was interesting to see because we got out here yesterday morning. We're going over shelter construction. I'm telling the guys, you know, here's how thick you build your beds, and here's how you build your slope on the shelter at about 60 degrees and this and that and we we're looking at some of the shelters already in place like the one you're going to see here shortly and uh, the bedding was already bone dry so some of the shelters here held up really well some had a few leaks in them and I know some of the shelters that were constructed yesterday afternoon when I was going around looking at them in the evening uh, there were going to be some wet campers <laughs> wet sleepers at night here so uh, Anyway, let's check out this one here. I got a uh, what's called a uh, what I call a um, basket weave shelter. Our, our shelters out here we base around the juniper, so <clears throat> we've got a lot of a lot of scrub here. Not a lot to work with, as you can see. A handful of junipers, and these junipers have these um, angular designs to them that, that they've um, that we work with rather. And rather than constructing a classic mountain man lean-to where you've got your ridge pole, straight ridge pole lashed to a tree, we just work with the natural design of these shelters here. <clears throat> so you can see the design of these, the layout of these uh, ridge poles here. They're going all kinds of funky angles going all over the place. So rather than try and make that conform to our shelter design, a specific shelter design, we work with what nature's got in place here. So you can see all we've done is created uh, a basket weave. We've taken some of the <clears throat> dead branches from the area and from dead fallen trees and just woven them in place. And then we've got a thick bed, about a foot here, of juniper duff. Now this held up throughout the rainstorm here. You can see one section got pretty wet there, but the rest of this is bone dry. So real thick shelter with the uh, woven material and then thatching on the back that I'll show you in a minute. Here's a bulrush basket one of the students made. I was tinkering around with some basket stuff the other day, and uh, this is good enough for one person. Now, this doesn't doesn't have a sh uh, fire with it. We could have a small trench fire right here, if necessary, about a foot away, foot or two away from the uh, baseboard here that you see. <clears throat> that baseboard came from some of the boards that we had when we were, uh, building our hogan out here. So <clears throat> one of the students grabbed that, was using that for the baseboard. Rest is all natural material. You can see the thatch material on the back here, just stuffing in a bunch of grass and whatever was available, a few salvage boards from the Hogan. And then this is constructed under this old juniper, so you've already got some rain coverage there and sun coverage. You can see the angle of the shelter here. It's at about uh, the back of the shelter. It's at about 60 degrees. And then most of our winds, predominant winds, come out of this pass right here. In fact, the Hopi say that their wind god, Yopansa, lives in a crack in the base of one of the mountains um, over in these parts. And I'm pretty sure he does because it's absolutely savage out here sometimes when the wind is howling. So because of our, our predominant winds coming out of that direction there, <clears throat> southwest, west-southwest, we have the backs of our shelter set up with that in mind. <clears throat> so we build our shelters nestled in these old grandmother juniper trees and then we weave them in using a basket weave design rather than making uh, a shelter that really alters the nature of the tree by cutting things and, and 
lashing up ridge poles. We just go with already what's in place. And then we've got the back of the shelter to the prevailing wind. Now, if we were to have a fire, if I had a fire with one of these, I'd want to angle this a little differently. Whenever you have a fire with an open face lean to or wiki up, or even tarp shelter, you want your opening and your ridge pole to be parallel to the prevailing wind. That way, the the wind, the breeze scoops away, carries away the smoke, but you still get the benefit of the heat. But because we weren't having fires out here, um, I just told students, put your backs your shelter to the prevailing wind, and that'll help you out. Now, one other thing, and I would do this if I were staying out here another night, I just didn't have, didn't have the time with the shelter I was using, and, and uh, with some of the other students, we just didn't have time, we're covering so many other skills, and and um, that kind of thing but as time goes by you add on you, you beef up your shelter and I would add on about a foot of rocks either at the back of the shelter or behind it so either at the back of the interior here or behind the shelter I would add a pile of rocks or debris or logs or something so that I don't have a, a little breeze creeping through the gaps in the shelter here at night <clears throat> in the desert sometimes this is about the best we can get because we just don't have a lot of material out here and if you can get about eighty percent shade coverage to keep the sun off you during the day and keep the wind off you at night that's about the best you can hope for we don't want to be tearing up all the vegetation out here in each of our courses true survival situation yeah you do that kind of thing but out here um, I'd like to keep some of the the, uh, <laughs> the vegetation and take care of the land so we're not tearing up the uh, the landscape on each course <coughs> So anyway, basket weave, lean-to here, as we call them, working with uh, nature's design, just weaving it in there, creating that 60-degree slope so it sheds the rain, and then piling on whatever thatch and material you have. Good way to go. Here's an old wiki up we built in our nine-week program probably, I want to say, six years ago. Some students used it then. It was more thatched with debris and juniper. And your wikiups, your classic western structure, you see this all the way along the west coast, California, Oregon, uh, Washington, Great Basin Desert, certainly down here in Arizona, Texas. And this type of shelter was made just by forming a tripod, basically. So you need three uh, stout poles. You either lash them together. We were practicing a, a knot here called a jam knot. Um, otherwise, you do what the Navajo did, and, and uh, they took these... Uh, forked poles, three fork poles, and lashed them together, or just jammed them together. Uh, that way, you didn't have to waste any any cordage. <clears throat> and then uh, from there, you just add on your other poles and debris. And debris. Now this one's pretty pretty beat up. Nobody's used this in a couple of years here, so it needs some thatch and some work. But uh, this would be big enough for two people to curl up in. The only thing it's missing is your foot of insulation. You always need that foot of debris whether it's juniper duff or pine needles or if you're in another area cattails say you're by a riparian zone uh, leaves moss if you're up in Alaska well you work with whatever you have for information on our desert survival courses our survival books or upcoming DVD you can visit our website at apathways.com